Imagine you're snapping a picture of your dog. You can stretch it wide, flip it sideways, even slide it over, and those are all graph transformations. But the one thing no one explains? The mindset shift that makes all those moves crystal clear. So let's start by calling out what makes this hard. Transformations are so confusing because there's so many disconnected rules. We talk about shifting up, shifting down, shifting left and right, stretching, reflecting, and there's so many things to keep in your head all at once. One of the other big problems is that horizontal shifts always feel like they're backwards. A shift of x minus 3 feels like it should move the graph to the left because we're subtracting from the x value when in fact it shifts the graph to the right. And then on top of that, things get blurry when we try to make multiple changes at once and vertical and horizontal transformations can get meshed together. So the result is that this all feels kind of like a memorization nightmare. But here's the key, you actually don't need to memorize everything. You just need to understand what each transformation does to the graph individually. So here's the core idea and the key mindset shift. We just have to remember that every point moves. At its core, a transformation just means that every point on the graph migrates to a new location. That's it. We don't need to think about the function as a whole. We just need to pick a few anchor points, like maybe the vertex of a parabola or the intercepts of a line and track what happens to those specific points, which means we can always start by asking ourselves, what is this transformation doing to a single point? For instance, let's say we have this parabola in red here with its vertex at the origin. We can see that if we transform this parabola by shifting it three units to the right, that we can do that one point at a time. We can start with the most obvious point, which is the vertex itself, and we see that the vertex moves three units to the right. But that means that every other point along the original parabola should also move three units to the right. And we see that that is in fact the case. We can match up different sets of points, and as we trace up the parabola, we can see that each set is getting shifted exactly three units to the right, which is why this distance is always the same between corresponding points. In other words, instead of thinking about the entire parabola in general, when we're trying to transform it by moving it three units to the right, pick particular points, like the vertex at zero, zero, or like the point one, one, or two, four, transform those individual points, and then connect that new set of points to form the new transformed parabola. So with that key idea in mind, let's talk about the four main types of transformations. The first one is this idea of a vertical shift, where adding some constant to the function moves the graph up and subtracting some constant from the function moves the graph down. Notice how the addition of these constants is outside the function f of x, whereas in horizontal transformations, the addition of constants happens inside the function where we replace x with x minus four or we replace x with x plus one. This horizontal shift where we change x to x minus four, and again, remember that this feels backwards, moves the graph four units to the right, even though we have subtraction. When we have addition and we add one here, replacing x with x plus one, that means the graph is gonna shift one unit to the left. So we have to remember, horizontal shifts always feel backwards. We also need to know about reflections, where multiplying the function by negative one reflects the graph or creates a mirror image of it over the x-axis, whereas replacing x with negative x is gonna reflect the graph over the y-axis. It's gonna create a mirror image of the curve across the y-axis. And then finally, stretches and compressions, where multiplying the function by a value greater than one is gonna make it taller, it's gonna stretch it out vertically, whereas multiplying the function by some value between zero and one, so a positive fraction here, is gonna make the graph shorter, it's gonna compress it or squish it down vertically. So these two here are vertical, these two are horizontal. If we multiply inside the function by a value greater than one, it's going to compress or squish the graph so that it becomes narrower. Whereas multiplying by a positive constant between zero and one, so a positive fraction like this, is gonna pull or stretch the graph wider. So just remember, inside the function is always a horizontal transformation. Outside the function is always a vertical transformation. And those inside changes always feel reversed. So the horizontal shift feels reversed, it feels backwards. The same is also true for these horizontal shifts. Multiplying by two feels like it should double the width of the function. It actually makes it narrower. Multiplying by one half feels like it should squish the function so that it's only half as wide when in fact it makes it wider. So those horizontal transformations, those transformations that are inside the function, feel backwards. The vertical transformations, like the vertical shift or the vertical stretch and compression, those usually feel more natural to us when we think about them. With this in mind, let's try to walk through a full example so that we can see these transformations in action. 
let's say that we're starting with the function f of x equals x squared. That's the parabola with its vertex at the origin that opens up. It's this graph here. And what we've been asked to do is sketch the graph of this function, g of x, which is negative 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared plus 5. We may not know exactly what this graph looks like, but we can start with x squared, which we're very familiar with, and take it one transformation at a time. Now, and this is key, as we're applying these transformations, we always want to work our way from the inside out, starting with whichever transformation is closest to x. So if we're trying to go from x squared to this function g of x, we would not start by applying the plus 5 vertical shift. Instead, we would start here right in the interior of the function at the x minus 3, and we would replace x in f of x with x minus 3. Remember, though, that this is a horizontal shift, which means it's going to feel backwards. So instead of the minus 3 shifting the graph to the left, it's actually going to shift it to the right. So we can sketch in a new function, which we call just x minus 3 quantity squared. So in f of x here, we've just replaced x with x minus 3. We haven't changed anything else. All that does is shift this parabola three units to the right. So we've now accomplished this portion of the function. Our next step is to continue working from the inside toward the outside, which means that next we have to multiply by two. When we multiply what we have here by two, because we're multiplying our entire existing function, the x minus three quantity squared by two, we're not just multiplying the x by two, but the whole function, that means that our parabola is gonna get taller. If we sketch that, we see that we have 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared, and that parabola gets taller. That, of course, gets us to this point. Our next step is to multiply the entire function by negative 1. Well, that's this transformation here, multiplying the entire function by negative 1, which means we're going to be reflecting over the x-axis or creating a mirror image of this yellow curve across the x-axis. So that new transformed parabola is this function, negative 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared, and now we've tackled this entire part of g of x. All that's left to do is add 5 to the function, which is going to be a vertical shift up of 5 units. So our purple parabola here will shift up 5. And now we've tackled this entire function. We've arrived at g of x. And we can say that this green parabola here is the graph of negative 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared plus 5, which we got to in four steps by starting with the function x squared. If we bring back the original function, we see what we started with and where we got to by applying four steps of transformations. And going back to this core idea, let's recap what happened to a particular point on the graph. Let's say that we started with this point here, which is the point 2, 4 on the original function f of x. So we start with the point 2, 4. Well, when we then shift the graph three units to the right, it means this point here in particular is going to shift to the point 5, 4, and we see that by adding the point in here. When we then multiply by 2, we have a vertical stretch, which is going to pull the y-coordinate 4 up to 8, and the coordinate here becomes 5, 8, which means we can plot in our new point. Then reflecting the graph over the x-axis by multiplying by negative 1 means that the y-value gets multiplied by negative 1, so our new point becomes 5, negative 8, and we can plot that in. And then finally, when we add in a vertical shift of 5 units up, that means this y value of negative 8 is going to go to negative 3. And our final point should sit at 5, negative 3. And if we sketch that in, we see that that in fact does intersect this parabola, this sketch of g of x. And obviously, we could do that for every point. We know easily that the original vertex at 0, 0 moved here to 3, 5. And every individual point on x squared would transform into another point on negative 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared plus 5. The key here is that we always want to go step by step, one step at a time, one transformation at a time. Here it took us four steps, and we can track points along the way as we apply one transformation at a time. We never want to try to jump from the original graph to the final graph in one step. Instead, we want to build this piece by piece and track it like it's a journey. Once we stop memorizing rules and start tracking points, then transformations turn into a puzzle instead of a pain. We just need to remember this one key idea that transformations just move the graph. They move every point on the original graph to new points on the transformed graph. We always want to start simple and practice one transformation at a time and then try layering them together 
always remembering to start on the inside and work our way toward the outside. Once transformations click, so much of graphing gets easier. If you're ready to keep going or want to explore more, the link in the description takes you right to my courses.